Hello everyone, welcome back to Axangel RC and to a first look at the brand new hot out of the oven C Uni RC7 Pro HD video control and telemetry system. This thing is something of a successor to the current MK15 and MK32 radios and the HM30 system, has generally the same functionality but promises a lot more. Much better and brighter screen, better weatherproofing, better range. The Pro version, the one I have here, is duo band operating on 2.4 and 5.8 GHz, hopping between the two depending on environment factors and now makes use of hopping frequencies so it should provide a more robust link in more interference dense areas. The air unit has two camera inputs so you wouldn't need the FPV hub of the HM30 system to use two gimbals or cameras together. It works with the new Uni ground control software which now works much better on Windows compared to C's version of QGround control and also seems to work better on the radio as well compared to the C FPV app or at least the home arrow seems to be a tad more accurate. But let's look at the radio itself. It arrives in a very convenient carry case and is pretty decently packed. The stick ends are removable and you might notice that the weatherproofing rubber is missing on my throttle stick. That is because I specifically asked for a version of the radio with no self-centering throttle stick so they had to remove the rubber as it was also centering the stick a bit. But I will manage. I am pretty certain I will not be sitting out in the open rain when I am flying. Plus, a non-centering stick is a much better option for a plane. The little joystick thingy under the throttle stick does feel nice and it is in a convenient spot to be used for gimbal control for instance, but future field tests will determine just how that would be in a real world scenario. As far as I know the system has a weatherproofing rating of IP54 which is decent and I can tell you right now that the buttons and switches have a much more premium and water resistant feel to them compared to the MK15 and MK32 and I particularly like the way they solved the three position switches because that would be a lot longer lasting and more reliable weatherproofing than the rubber covers which the switches on the MK series have which tend to puncture pretty easily. This feels much better though I'm not sure how the dials are protected but I hope they are since the radio has a rating. There are buttons everywhere on this radio so it would give you a lot of flexibility when choosing what to do with them and I can tell you with absolute certainty that this is more convenient than the previous series. On the top there are connectors for the antennas, the SMAs sticking out of there are for the 2.4 GHz antennas while the 5.8 GHz antennas are supposedly built in somewhere in the radio. I just hope they are there on top with some good orientation though at this point I have my doubts whether that frequency will actually see any use in a city environment. On the top you can also see some rubber covers for the USB, LAN and HDMI ports and this too is much better fitting, thicker and feels more premium than on the MK series of radios, certainly seals the ports much better. The LAN port is on a JST-GH connector but they do provide a cable to go from that to an RJ plug for the LAN port on your computer. We also get a full size HDMI connector. On the bottom is another set of sealed ports and slots, the USB-C port, micro SD card slot and a SIM card slot. I will not be using the SIM card slot because I can provide a Wi-Fi hotspot for the radio from my phone if need be. You also have the tripod mount there just in case you, for some weird reason, want to use it like that though I feel using the touchscreen while this is mounted on a tripod would be very uncomfortable. On the back is the battery, you press the button and lift to open the compartment and then just slide out the battery. It's nice to have access to that unlike the MK15. The battery supposedly lasts 8 hours on the Pro and 11 hours on the normal version of this radio. Lasts more on the normal version since it has only a 2.4 GHz module in it so uses less power plus its screen is different with lower resolution so potentially that also might be more economical. The radio comes with a 30 watt quick charger and unlike the MK15 and MK32 it can be charged during operation which is a huge improvement in my mind. Also on the back you will notice air inlet and exhaust vents, make sure not to cover those during operation as there is a fan in there providing active cooling to the radio and even though it is a bit loud 
when you are outside it won't be as noticeable. Now. In the box you also get antennas for the air module and the radio and the antennas with the metal bits are the 2.4 GHz ones. You can also recognize them by looking into the connectors. They are different for 5.8 and 2.4 so you really would need to be a proper idiot to mess them up. The air unit is also in there and depending on the version of the system you get it will either have two or four antenna cables coming out of it. You also have the charger in there and the stands for the bottom of the radio which pair nicely to the back harness you can put on in order to hold the radio and prevent it from flopping around. I did try it on this way and it is pretty comfortable plus it frees up your hands to do other stuff during use since you don't necessarily have to hold the radio. That being said usually radios of this type should come with longer sticks so see take notes please and on that note please consider a third full-size control stick instead of this little bump here I have a feeling it will allow for a much more precise control of the gimbal there is also a bag with a USB cable and a small adapter for it to make it USB a compatible a set of cables with connectors for the air module a rather useless set of stickers at least outside of China with what I can only assume are labels for the buttons but since they are in Chinese they are useless to me. And last and possibly least a LAN cable for the radio to computer connection although as you will see later on it is kind of redundant in this case unless it is also used for firmware updates or something of the sort. So basically we have a pretty nice package here with all you need to get up and going and even though on the surface this has essentially the same functionality as the MK15 and MK32 series systems it should be doing everything they can much better. It should be a completely different system overall in terms of protocols and the way it works and supposedly because I know you will ask so now at least I will get to scold whoever has not watched the full video but is asking questions. So supposedly the output power is up to 500 milliwatts which is up from the supposed 320 milliwatts the HM30 system outputs. They do claim a range of 40 kilometers on the Uni RC system so I guess time and some testing will show how accurate that claim is though I have my doubts that the range is achievable with the stock stick antennas. And I also have a feeling that if the range is achievable that would be on the 2.4 GHz band for obvious reasons. And since the non-pro version is 2.4 GHz only, you get my drift. Might be a better fit for those not looking to fly above populated areas much and it comes with the added benefit of being cheaper. Now when it comes to mounting this on your drone of choice, if it's a new build it's easy use the provided cable bundle and you will be good. If you are upgrading from something else you might need to do some chopping and splicing to get it to fit but since I am upgrading from the HM30 air unit in my MFE Hero things will be a bit easier since the gimbal connectors are readily compatible and I get to remove the FPV hub. Or if you want to use three cameras might be possible to connect the hub to one of the ports on the air module and use it that way. I will look into that and I will add it later on. However, check this out. They did add port labels on the new air unit which is nice, at least you don't have to guess which is which, but they also removed one pin each from the UART and SBUS ports making it not readily compatible with the HM30 air unit's wiring. But all it took for me was a quick change of the connector and I was done in no time. All that was left was to mount the antenna cables to their respective mounts, screw in the antennas, make an extension cable to power the air module since it comes with a connector, not a cable like the HM30 unit did and everything was ready to be powered up. Three of the antenna cables did go in easy but the rearmost one was a pain. Guess the MFE Hero was designed to have small, possibly a child's, Chinese hands installing the cable. I felt like impregnating a cow but in the end I managed to get it done. Also keep in mind that even though I will be powering the air unit from 12 volts right now this new one can take up to 76 volts directly to it which is pretty impressive. I mean it is sort of a tell me this was mainly designed for industry without saying it 
type of situation since the predominant voltages there are in the range 12 to 14S and the technology obviously follows. Works all the way down to 7 volts though so 12 volts should be plenty. A guy in the CE group did complain about a burnt capacitor on his Uni RC7 air unit after a week's worth of use so I hope that doesn't happen on mine and I'm not really sure what caused it on his but fingers crossed it is a one-off. Would be a shame otherwise. Alright, finally, let's go and power this puppy up. Now, since my YouTube statistics tell me you lot only watch an average of just over 4 minutes out of a video, which makes a lot of my videos a total waste of time and effort regarding their length, like the last one, a 17 minute video, and average watch time on it is 3 minutes and 42 seconds. Seriously guys, what can you see or grasp or even learn or understand out of a 17 minute video when you only see under 4 minutes of it? And mind you, that means a good chunk of you, so much less than that, since that's the average. I just don't understand this. But anyway, I'm going to split this video in two to avoid making it an over 20 minute video of which you'd only see three minutes. And also in the process getting you to watch more of them percentage wise since they will be shorter each. I'm going to end this video here before moving into the setup and use of the system which will be in the next video. All relevant links are in the description below. If you have liked this one, like, share, subscribe and notify to stay appraised of new videos. Big thank you to all my Patreon supporters and anyone who has supported this channel in any way, fly safe and I will see you in a bit in the next video.